new art journal page, guys. All right, no more ABC's journal, but um, I do still have my art journal to work in. So right now I am using an embossing folder I got from a fabulous friend of mine, Elizabeth. Uh, she sent me all of these uh, Tim Holtz embossing folders, and she set me to the task of making sure I used them in an art journal page, so I thought, ooh, I'm going to find a good way. So I took them all, and I covered them all with stiffen stuff. Um, my spray bottle clogged up. That stuff is really hard on spray bottles, so I um, just brushed it on, and it just made the paper really firm. Uh, you can find that at the craft store. It's stiffen stuff, S-T-I-F-F-E-N stuff. Uh, and this is just gesso. I'm gessoing the page. I learned my lesson the hard way on another art journal page as to why I should have gessoed that page. Uh, because it leaked through and destroyed the other page behind it, which was also not gessoed. So, yeah, I learned my lesson. Might be doing a video on why you should gesso. <laughs> so, I'm using Fluid uh, Matte Medium from Liquitex. And I'm trying to use that to... Um, glue all those papers down and I'm just collaging it all down. This ends up not being the best option. As you can see this brush was filthy because it's kind of turning gray. So, yeah. Well. So I switched to the Mod Podge matte. And this is a little bit thicker so it helps keep this paper down because after the paper had stiffened stuff on it, uh, it it was a little, I don't want to say brittle, but kind of like crispy. So it was harder to stick down than just typical paper was. Uh, but it did uh, have some really good texture. Okay. Well, while my son is uh, cutting holes in the paper with my crocodile. I will try to continue narrating. So, uh, yeah, again, I am just collaging this down, and I did intentionally put down uh, pieces upside down so that some pieces were embossed and the others were debossed. And uh, because this has text in it, essentially, um, it's backwards, but I was fine with it. I just wanted a background texture. And uh, just something that would uh, pick up some paint. I just wanted to play with some paint. So I'm just gluing stuff all down. And oh, Lord, there's drying footage. Oh, well. Got to have it. So again, I'm just going in. I'm not trying to cover up the entire page with this, um, but I am trying to get rid of any major white spots. And this embossing folder is a Tim Holtz embossing folder. I don't know the name of it. I don't keep packaging. Um, <laughs> I don't keep packaging, so um, I'm not sure what the name of it is. I'm sorry, but um, it's really cool. It's like a sewing pattern, like an embossed sewing pattern. So there you can see it's dry. And now I am just taking gesso, and I'm lightly gessoing over this. I grabbed this blue paper because we got it cheap somewhere a long time ago. I think it was from Costco. Got a giant pack of 12x12 cardstock, and it was very vibrant, kind of jewel tone colors, and they don't really fit into a lot of um, scrapbooking pages and themes and everything. So we just kind of use it for stuff that we don't really care too much about. We have a giant stack of it. So I'm taking a baby wipe and I'm just going over the embossed and debossed areas trying to rub away some of that so that way you can see it. Now I'm sorry I skipped some of this. Um, essentially all I did was I brushed some of that Lumiere Halo Blue Gold on. That's all I did between that last gessoed scene and this. So it, this is just with some of the uh, turn cold... oh sorry. That was that was just with that that paint. Excuse me one moment. Okay, disaster averted. So anyway, so yeah, I just brushed it on very lightly, that uh, blue gold, and then I used um, a baby wipe to wipe some of it away. And this is Quinacridone Nicolazo Gold by Golden, and I did a little bit of the liquid glazing solution, or fluid, whatever it's called. And um, I heated the back of the pages so that way it would stick on the bottom, um, and then I'm just rubbing the rest of it away with a baby wipe. I'm trying to be very cautious with it, so I wanted a verdigris kind of look. 
So I'm just taking a little bit more of that nickel azo gold and uh, just highlighting a couple areas and going around the edges, giving it a, a nice framed look. Hi, Cole. This is a pack of mixed media paper I got from Hobby Lobby, and it was, I think, a dollar and a half for all these different types of paper. And one of them was this corrugated paper, and I really liked it. So I thought, hmm, I could use this. So I used Peacock Feather Distress Ink uh, to hit all those high points on the corrugated paper. And these are Niji uh, pearlescent watercolors, and I'm going into the deepest part of the grooves with the uh, that dark coppery brown color. And uh, because they're pearly, uh, they look fairly metallic. So that's why I call it kind of coppery. So I'm just going in and hitting some of the those low areas and a couple of the high areas just to make it look like an old rusted fence. I just wanted to, I wanted to play around with old vintage distressed colors. I wanted to get out of my purple, pink, and teal phase for at least one page spread. So I went to my second favorite, which was distressed. So uh, then I, the other papers that I'm using back there are glitter papers, and I'm using, again, Peacock Feather Distress Ink. And I'm just using the blending tool to smear some of it on, and I want to say this is, that was forest moss, but I don't think I used, I think this is peeled paint. And I'm just blending the two colors together just to kind of mimic the background, but they look different because it's a different media. Um, and I'm just using this just to kind of create a little collage on that left side of the page, and then I had a couple smaller pieces of it, so I figured I'd do the same on the right with a smaller piece. So, let's see, I am inking all of the edges with Vintage Photo, which is kind of the, which is definitely, holy, it's the closest color to the Quinacridone Nicolazo Gold, so, in distress. I'm using a tiny attacher, stapling, and these are a bunch of really old stamps that I inherited from a friend. And they are so old that they're sticky. If you have any really old clear stamps, you'll know what I'm talking about. They turn this yellow color and they get sticky. So anytime you touch them, they move. So it took me a minute to get everything positioned the way I wanted it to. Um, and they're just a bunch of different words. Voice, triumph, listen, um, accomplish joy, stuff like that. So I'm just building it up on, this is a piece of uh, notebook paper. And it came with that, um, obviously because it's notebook paper, it came with the punching on the side. Going back in, I went in with the uh, pearlescent watercolors and just flicked some on. And then this is more vintage photo around the edges, crumpled it up, and made it even more vintagey. And then right here, you can't see it, sorry, I was tearing some of those uh, edges where it was connected to the notebook. And then here I am using a Tim Holtz stamp, and I want to say it says, not all who wander are lost. Sure. And um, it was one solid long line, so I was using washi tape, sorry you couldn't see that, I was using washi tape to mask off the portions I didn't want to stamp right then. And then I cut it off and used a EK Success notebook edge punch to make it look like notebook paper. And then inked it up with vintage photos. Sorry, this isn't my quietest video. The little one is running around. And then I used uh, Fabri-Tac, my favorite glue, to glue it on. And then I sat the Distress Ink container on top of it to keep it all down. Now I'm gluing the same, the other one down on the other side. And I left this footage in. I don't end up using all of these embellishments, but I left this footage in so you could see like some of the thought process that goes behind, you know, what I'm going to use, what I'm not going to use. That Florida Lee, my son is currently using. That's what he just asked me if he could use. So um, it was something that came on a cupcake. So. <laughs> Yeah. I ended up obviously not using it since he's using it right now. Um, so I'm just playing around with a couple different things, trying to figure out what I'm going to do, where I'm going to put it. So I got all these flowers from my 
fabulous friend Kelly Merton. Thank you, Kelly. I use these all the time. I want to say the teal ones were Michael's flowers, the the cheap ones like Recollections or something that are in the dollar fifty two dollar bin. And I got a bunch of those, so I kind of I think I inked them up a little bit just to make them grungy with a little bit of vintage photo. And then the other one uh, came that color. And this I'm using those Niji pearlescent watercolors again just to make it uh, brown coppery color and shiny. I'm going to slow down and show you what they look like up close so that way you can see how they look. Oh, hi, oh, hi Cole. So fabulous! So that was it up close. Now what I'm doing is I'm taking the stems since they're wire and I want to say these are wild orchid crafts uh, flowers that Kelly sent me and I'm just wrapping them around the edge of my tweezers just to create a little spiral type of spray deal with the wire. And uh, you'll see in the bottom right hand corner of that flower cl cluster blah, blah, there is some chain hanging from it. Those are Tim Holtz embellishment thing. On the left is a Michael's Recollection Key. I'm going to say it was $1.50, one of those. I have a ton of them because I stocked up because I love them. I just used a little bit of hot glue and a little bit of the Fabri-Tac. These are feathers that I got from Michael's. Alright guys, I am essentially just tucking these feathers under this uh, paper cluster. And just trying to see how many feathers I like, how many I want. I end up messing it up, getting some glue in a spot I didn't want, so then I had to add another feather to cover that up. So, yeah. But that almost completes the page. There are a bunch of still photos afterward. Uh, this page has a ton of texture and looks really great up close. So, I uh, hope you check those out. This is a little button I got from... Um, uh, Tuesday morning. So these are all the pages, or these are the two pages. I have a bunch of photos of them so you can see it kind of up close. And um, that was the left page. And there again, I stamped with peeled paint right there with that FYI uh, distress ink. So uh, I like the right page better. Um, yeah, because it's pretty. Look, see? The chain kind of got bunched up when I sat it down. But you can see it there. It's, it dangles and looks good. So, there's a close-up. It looks really shiny and a lot like metal in person. So, looks really good. I hope you guys like it. And check out my uh, blog if you like more. I will talk to you all soon. Bye. <laughs>